The C65 was a prototype computer developed by Commodore from 1990 to 1991. It was the last 8-bit computer Commodore ever made, although they canceled the project before selling a single machine at the retail level. The C65 was to be sold as a vastly improved and enhanced C64 with backwards compatibility. In many regards, it would have utterly replaced the C128 for 8-bit fans that still wanted to access their C64 libraries but receive a much upgraded low-cost computer with impressive new features that resembled aspects of the Amiga. The C65 had a more advanced version of BASIC and a built-in 3.5-inch floppy disk drive compatible with the 1581. Since the 1581 format was not common for most C64 owners, and was mostly used as a storage device, the C65 retained the serial IEC port for external Commodore disk drives and peripherals. That made it possible to use a 1541, 71, and 81 disk drive. It also had a CPU that ran at 3.5 MHz. Now for comparison, the C64 was 1 MHz, while a stock Amiga 1000 ran at 7. It also had a brand new VIC-3 video chip that could provide an impressive 256 colors from a palette of 4096, with several video resolutions to choose from as well. But the C65 was ultimately axed by then-chairman Irving Gould. From that point on, the computer was shrouded in a lockbox of mystery and intrigue as it faded into the realm of Commodore legend. Every now and then, one might surface on eBay and fetch over a staggering $20,000. If the thing is actually complete and functional, the price can even soar to two times that amount and beyond. About a decade ago, a group of talented engineers dreamed up a crazy idea to recreate the C65. They dubbed their project the Mega 65. Mega is actually an acronym for the Museum of Electronic Games and Art which is a non-profit organization consisting of volunteers. The stats of this 8-bit computer are impressive. At a high level, it is an FPGA-based computer with a large amount of attention paid towards the physical aesthetics. The fact that the Mega Team, across all these years, managed to actually ship a fully functional Commodore-inspired computer with a real physical floppy drive and mechanical keyboard feels almost like a miracle. Especially in 2022, with continuous global supply chain disruptions and shortages. The Mega 65 is currently being sold in two batches. The first batch of 400 machines sold out in a matter of days. The second batch is still being sold at this time, and the number of machines in that batch is a thousand. After that, well, who knows if there will be more. I was in batch number one, and my machine is number 323. There are a few things you should know before you decide to buy a Mega 65 just to set your expectations accordingly. Number one, you need to retrain your brain for such a transaction. While it is a significant investment for a tech toy, don't think of yourself as a typical customer buying a product on the store shelf. As M65 co-creator Paul Gardner said, you should think of yourself more as a participant in a small but vibrant hobbyist community. And that doesn't mean writing piles of code necessarily. Just engaging at whatever level you can provide offers a lot of value. Making this mental adjustment should remove any preconceived notions of what you're going to be receiving and doing the day it arrives. Number two, the platform is not set in stone and very likely won't be. It is an open source project where currently the roadmap is organic and evolving. This could solidify over time, but right now you'll be diving into a world that is still being defined on the fly. But you get to help steer the direction if you so desire. The C65 wasn't finished in 1991, and neither is the Mega 65 in 2022. The software and platform are very much a work in progress. Number three. In fact, when you receive the machine, you'll spend the first day learning how to simply get it up to date. You're thinking, isn't this new? Yes, but the software that gets shipped will already be dated when you receive it. In the beginning, you'll want to format the secondary SD card, join file server so you can download software updates 
which occur if not daily, then weekly, join the Discord and ultimately update the various firmware and OS files on your brand new Mega 65 the day you pull it out of the box. I've attached a link to a short quick start guide I wrote to the description of this video if you're looking for a checklist of things to do on day one to get caught up. Number four. Finally, there are currently no killer apps or AAA games at this time. You need to remind yourself what it was like when you got your very first C64 and imagine it not having a tape or disk drive. All you have is that manual on the desk in front of you with some type in programs in the back. Thankfully, you have a very vibrant community eager to help so you aren't entirely deserted on a desert island. C64 Compatibility The machine is not and quite likely never will be 100% compatible with the Commodore 64. If you were thinking of buying one of these machines in the hopes it would replace your C64, there are a ton of much cheaper and vastly more compatible solutions in the market today. If that's your goal, you really should get an original C64 or an Ultimate 64 or a Mister or some other much cheaper and more stable machine. The Mega 65 is a lot more focused on its own path, an enhanced and upgraded C65, not the C64. While it's true some C64 software will work, a large portion of it simply won't. And here's why. Use of illegal opcodes will crash programs, and many C64 games use illegal opcodes extensively. Games with copy protection schemes will not work. Games with fast loaders will not work and any games that were hard-coded to look for a 1541 will not work. Guys, that's a lot of C64 software that will not work. And that's just the way it is. And while there's a separate installable C64 core that is also being worked on, you shouldn't expect that to be rock solid anytime soon either. That's just a fact. The real-time clock. There are several batch number one M65s that have faulty real-time clocks. The rhyme or reason for the failure at the time was unknown, but it isn't software related. My real-time clock seems to be fine, but one of my good friends who has an M65 with a serial number just four digits away from mine with the exact same chipset has a faulty clock. It looks like they pulled the chips out of a bad pile. You can use my quick start guide to easily determine if your real-time clock is one of the good ones or if you'll be looking for a secondary external solution at a later date. The case. With the batch number one cases, the mold maker in Germany named Hintsteiner apparently removed all of the cases from the molds before they were fully cooled. As a result, many cases have stretch marks on the top shell and even minor warping on the bottom shell. In general, the warp appears to be no more than one millimeter. However, this can make the back area very unstable and even make a case audibly pop if pushed without much effort. When I put my real-time clock battery in, I pried my lower shell outward four to five times in different locations near the center back area. The plastic is surprisingly bendable and not rigid. After reassembly, my warp appears to have been mostly fixed. Do this at your own risk, but I'm pleased with my results. Conclusion The fact we have this machine on our desks feels like a gift from the gods. The never-ending passion of the Mega 65 team to get to this point is frankly inspirational and still hard to believe the dream came true. For me, this was the first time in over 30 years where I actually felt like a kid again, opening a box with a brand new computer that Commodore created. Is that really what happened? Of course not. But that's what it felt like. In my heart, I touched the sleeping face of Commodore for the very first time in a really, really long time. The issues with the case were a surprise, but is it a huge deal? No, not really. And it's a mostly fixable problem. The keyboard is the star of the show, full stop. It feels like the Amiga 2000 Cherry MX mechanical keyboard, and it's probably a small step up from that too. The keycaps are simply gorgeous and feel, well, they feel perfect. I do find the location of the power supply port awkwardly close to the cartridge bay. If you ever use cartridges, simply removing them without knocking the cord is a bit of focused surgery. And whoever the wise guy at Commodore that decided the mouse and joystick port should favor left-handed people is not my hero. But I do like the power switch and reset button over there. 
And I realize the Mega 65 is designed this way for historical purposes. All in all, I have to give the hardware an A-, and I think that's a very fair grade. Had the case been solid and without stretch marks, and the power supply put in a place where my hands never go, I would have easily given it an A. Regardless of these very minor issues, the machine is a gorgeous labor of love. On the software side, I can't really grade it since it is incomplete and still in a state of flux. But the potential of the machine makes the journey ahead feel exciting, if a tad uncertain. I did buy this computer realizing it would be likely a long time before I could really sit down and use it though. Why do I say that? Because I'm not a programmer, I'm a user. If I were a programmer, my goodness, I'd be over the moon wanting to create for this fascinating platform. As it is, I'm really at the mercy of the small yet passionate community that supports it. And I know I'm not alone. Other than diving deep into how to update my machine, there's honestly not a ton I can do with it today besides typing in simple programs in BASIC. My dream for this machine is for it to be the ultimate Commodore 8-bit battle station. 100% rock solid C64, 100% C128, and that includes 100% compatibility with CMD peripherals and code, and a vibrant M65 scene that takes things to the next level and makes some Amiga diehards totally jealous. I want an all-in-one Commodore Dream Machine. That sounds pretty mega to me, but at this point, I think if one third of that dream ever came true, I'd still be over the moon. And I think expecting all three are probably far-fetched anytime soon, if ever. Realistically, I can see my Mega 65 getting carefully stored in the near future. If I popped it out every three months to update the core files and put it back in storage, I don't think I'd be missing out that much since I'm not a developer. Except I do love looking at it and using it, even if it's purely for maintenance purposes at this early stage in its life. I can't wait to do more than update system files someday, and I do know that day is coming. And while I wish the C64 compatibility wasn't so wild west, I totally understand why it is, what it is, and might always be. And I'm 100% fine with that. Thank you so much, Mega65 team. If you're looking for a more in-depth guide, I highly recommend my friend Dan Sanderson's 2022 Welcome Guide. He takes things to the next level and provides a lot more detail for those that want to really roll their sleeves up and dig in. And remember guys, keep that Amiga and Mega 65 love flowing. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.